Hello guys, this time let's have another code review of a junior developer and this is the context. I'm showing you the actual email, actually blurring the contact details of that person. It's a project of a junior developer, first solo project after completing six months full stack developer course and it took two months to create it. And this time for the review I will do it a bit differently. I haven't looked at the repository at all. So for other code reviews, I prepared quite a lot. I've made a list of things that I want to talk about. And this time, let's start with installation of the project. And in almost live mode, I will go through all the basic things like routing, controllers and all of that. And let's see what we can find. So I started with the installation and I've done composer install and then migrate fresh seed. And here's the first error that I found. So the project is not installed because the name of some migration is already in use. And here I have a first tip for you. So there is a migration called update static pages table uh, to add a link to some static page database table, right? And then there's another update static page table on a different date. So you can see timestamp is different here, which adds another field. So tip for you is to name your migrations in a way that they would be unique. I'm actually not sure how it worked for the developer because it should have thrown errors anyway, but let's try to fix it. To fix that, we need to rename one of those migrations. So let's try update static page table icon, for example, and then we need to rename the actual file name. So static page table, refactor rename, table underscore icon. So those names should be identical and then they should work. Let's try it out again. Migrate fresh seed. And now it's successful. So this is a tip for you. You can manually rename the migrations, but with the rule that the name of the migration with underscore should be the same as class name in camel case. Next, we load the home page and we see this. And I already see that this code review may turn into let's make it work review with less than how to provide your project for someone else to review. So obviously some link is missing of non-object. If we go to our home page blade, which is this one, I found that there's settings link and settings title. And those settings come from the controller, front-end controller. It's actually a Laravel 7 project. So the syntax of routes is the old one, front-end controller. So there is a settings find one, and it should be lowercase actually. But then it implies that the settings already exist in the database, but there are no database seeds here. If I go to seeds, in database seeder, I see only roles, user and countries, but in the settings database table, there's nothing. So if you give your project to someone else, to your teammates, or even to yourself to install on a different server, or if you buy a new computer or something like that, you need to provide the seeds enough that at least page would load. But I assume we need to create those settings in some kind of admin area. So let's go to our web PHP and let's see how we can log in. Okay, we have auth routes, so it probably is slash login. Okay, it works. Interesting design. Let's see how we can log in. User seeder is just faker name and email. So we don't have that user as admin or do we have it? Not sure. Let's try to log in with that email. And password is what? Password? Oh, temp12345. Okay. Let's log in. Great. We're in. Now probably we should go to the settings. And it's empty. Is it a form? No, it is just a set of fields. And we need to go to new settings. Right. Then probably fill in the form. I will use fake filler Chrome extension to do that. And let's try to save it. Create settings. Okay. So latitude and longitude probably should be in some different format. So lot longitude, let's actually delete it. Maybe they're optional, I hope. Create settings, cannot be null. Okay, try again. Let's add point one and point one somewhere in the coordinates in Europe. Oh, successfully created. Great, now let's try to launch the homepage. We go to our homepage and yeah, we have something. Of course, it's all testing data, but it at least shows something. Doesn't load Google Maps, that's fine. But that's some kind of a homepage without an image because I haven't uploaded the logo, I think, but it kind of works. Next, let's see what's on that homepage from the controller point of view. So in front end controller, we already saw that we query all of those things that probably are needed for the homepage. And then we formulate all the big data. And do we need that? Let's try to format it a bit. So 
for more readability like this and I think we can use something called compact here so here those variables are the same as the keys and probably we could use compact or at least we can probably get rid of those variables so instead of initializing the variables and use them only locally why don't we do something like this so settings all here and then one by one slider all like this projects all actually i've messed it so projects all they are not even in the same order so services all should be in the services here then settings should be this one then partners here static page and why static page is in singular everything else is in plural actually not everything category is as well so naming things again i'm repeating that every time with almost every code review please make it clear so variable names are okay but is it one category or is it multiple categories if it's all then it's probably a list same here static page static pages it should be static pages and categories something like that so we made our controller shorter without temporary variables like this and if we go to our home page let's search for category no not that one we don't even see the category here probably it isn't some kind of include not even sure so probably some of those variables aren't even used on the home page i may be missing something but static pages they are used here so static pages like this so another tip don't provide the variables that you won't use next let's go through all the other methods or some of the other methods in front end controller and let's see what we have here project slug i also see a lot of junior developers do something like this that sign is not necessary so this would work you don't need to provide equal again settings fine lowercase that's a small detail and again setting up all the variable with this so i won't repeat the same thing i probably wouldn't set up a variable although actually in this case it makes sense because it is used in other case but then wait a minute we're querying project and we are querying galleries of that project is there a has many relationship there is a has many relationship so why don't we do something like projects with gallery or galleries gallery it should be probably galleries because it's many so with gallery like this and then we don't need this one and we can delete this one as well and then we can access that gallery and projects blade let's open projects blade for each gallery for each project gallery something like this okay moving on services same thing it should be less code and has many relationship projects order by id descending is a shorter way latest paginate and i see settings everywhere so couldn't we move it somewhere so settings here let's check all the methods settings here settings here so it should be some kind of global variable you could potentially do something like public function construct in the same controller and then do this settings equals setting find one and then it should be private settings so if it's used just in this controller only on the front end this makes sense and then you can change that to settings or this settings actually like this or if it's the same variable used in multiple controllers then you should do something like view composer or view share i will link in the description below the link of laravel documentation how to do that for multiple controllers now let's take a look at that route group for logged in user and i see that it's checked for user admin i'm not sure if it's needed here because there are two groups there are public routes and then there are admin routes so auth i think it's enough if i'm logged in i'm an admin in this case maybe it was in plans to have more groups and then that middleware makes sense anyway i would delete that and also i would delete the web because i think it's a default middleware which works for all the web requests so we don't even need that array middleware auth like this 
Then let's go to home controller. But then I think it should be renamed to something like dashboard controller because we, we have already the route home, which is front end controller. And then the home controller actually means dashboard. So it should be something like dashboard here like this. But let's roll it back and let's see what's inside in the home controller. It's just a static page, so nothing to find here, but empty lines and code formatting. Uh, I will not repeat the same thing in every junior code review, but please read about PSR standard and how to format the code. So next, user controller. What do we have inside of that? Construct user middleware. No, we don't need that because it's already in the routes web here. And then in index, we have users. Again, we need to shorten the code. So let's do this. And we don't need that users variable at all. Then we need to create a user. So we have roles here. And we have users. It doesn't really make much sense to have users in the create, unless there's a parent form of some kind, let's open user create. And let's search for users, nothing found. So probably my guess is that we don't need that users. And again, the lesson is do not initialize variables that you don't actually need or use. Let's go to our users table, add a user and it works. Then I saw briefly in the user create form is used like URL user, I would vote that you would use route names. So route user store, I think the name it is refresh, it still works. And then instead of CSRF field, you can do it a bit shorter refresh we didn't break anything cool then in the store again empty lines why do you need that validator make and then if validator fails this can be shorter i'm a big fan of form requests and you can see that in my other reviews but if you want to initialize the validator manually you can do it simple this validate and then you put in all the requests like this and then that validator fails is done automatically. So that validator will automatically redirect back with errors and with input. So you don't need to do that manually. Then we create the user. And there is some kind of variable which isn't used. So we don't need that. And that's it. Okay, then show empty methods. Don't leave empty methods if you don't use them. Edit the user. This looks fine. Update. It could be done in a better way. So look for my other code reviews for update methods. But basically, instead of request all, it should be request validated. And you could use form request for that. And then destroy user, all good. Okay, let's take a look at other controllers. For example, let's take a look at static page controller. And I'm assuming it should be the same thing or similar things everywhere. Yeah, most of the controllers probably are just CRUDs with some more logic like doing the slug. This is cool. Again, assigning the variables and doing the save. Instead of that, you can do something like static page create like this, and then provide the variable like request validated. Uh, if you use form requests, I've performed that a few times in other junior code reviews, so please watch those. Okay, and all of the others are probably CRUDs, so doesn't make much sense for me to review again. Actually, interesting thing, image store. What is image store? This thing I like that image store is a separate function in the controller, but not sure if it should be public or private if it's used only from the same controller. And then make the folder for original thumbnail and medium. Also I have a separate junior code review for the file upload. So you can watch that. I should probably advise to use Spotty Media Library package for this which includes thumbnails and medium sizes and all of that. And it makes this all huge portion of code is a few lines in Spotty Media Library. So I guess that's it for this code review. All the other controllers are more or less CRUDs. Also file upload, pretty similar. Oh, image store is different from controller to controller. So that should be totally Spotty Media Library. It should not be image store in every controller. Okay, that's all that I have time for now in this review. Let's wrap up. I will link in the description below to other code reviews that I've mentioned in this video. So to avoid repeating myself, I probably should stop reviewing all the code from end to end. And we'll start shooting videos on a separate topic or separate mistakes that I've noticed in the repositories of people who send me the repositories. But I will still have a few code reviews on this channel planned in upcoming weeks. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and see you guys in other videos.